Hello. Hey. I might have a conflict at 15 past and might drop early today. Okay.
Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, let's wait a little longer to see if more people will join in. Morning. Hey, Max, while you're waiting for everybody, <clears throat> uh, greetings. Um, can I ask you a question? Is there anybody from TNG that's going to be in the MWC next week? I don't think so, no. Okay. I'm not aware of everyone, aware of anyone. Because we, seems like we'll be able to get a room in the Meta Pavilion for a Magma meet and greet. So, we'll, reaching out to people to see if anyone is interested in coming in. Thanks. All right, should we start? And I'll just share the screen. Um, well, welcome everyone. Um, um yeah i i don't know do we have any topics for 5g updates or so so far there's nothing in the list otherwise i would just um go straight to the devops updates i have reached out to wave Labs to do specific updates on these areas and um i think they are participating in the mwc so this has been a crazy week for some of these people connect 5g web Labs and so on but i'm Going to try to follow up to see if we can get some updates on that. Sure, thanks. Um, all right, so a couple of quick um, DevOps updates. Um, one change was that so far um, we have had a lot of Dependabot um, PRs, and many of them only upgraded um, Go dependencies. So they changed Go mod uh, and Go some files. Um, but these were so far owned by the ghost team, which isn't a real team that exists. It's just so they aren't owned by any of the other code owners and are excluded. But for the GoMod files, it actually makes sense to check them in uh, or to to require code owners to approve PRs because you can actually influence the version that is used. Um, and so this PR basically just removed this ghost line for GoMod files. And now um, PRs that only change GoMod files uh, also attract code owners from whatever group. Um, so it depends on where the Go module is, but uh, they all require some kind of code ownership approval. Um, any questions on the Go topic here? Otherwise, there was um, a PEP8 Python formatting job that was silently failing for a very long time. Like, we couldn't quite figure out for like how long, but probably a year or something like that. Um, so there was a lot of regression here because it, it you just couldn't see it. It was always green. Um, and the job could be fixed just by upgrading to a newer version of the action, but the local setup was also not quite working. Um, so there's now an issue to track these regressions and to fix them, but this should also be handled by the scout rules. So you will probably, if you touch Python files, you will very likely see that this job is failing, um, that there's some formatting issue. Um, so then you can just fix it in whatever file you're touching if it's not too much. Um, and also the logic has been re-implemented that this um, job is only checking uh, the files that you touch. So it doesn't it doesn't check everything. That I think there's something like 18,000 lines that it's complaining about right now. Um, so yeah, whoever takes up that ticket could also use like a, a automatic formatting tool like uh, Black or something to do it. But um, yeah, so it's a future task, but the CI job is working at least. Um, any questions on that? Otherwise, there was an improvement. Um, this is work done by Marco mainly um, 
improving our cache usage for the GitHub cache. So this is where we have all the um, Vagrant VMs. And for the carrier Wi-Fi uh, VMs, we had one big cache entry that just cached the entire Vagrant uh, folder kind of. And this was refactored to only cache the like generic Ubuntu and traffic server images. And I think overall uh, it's now maybe down from two gigabytes to half a gigabyte for the what we use in the in the carrier Wi-Fi intake tests. And overall, I think we're now below nine out of the ten gigabytes that you have from GitHub. So there's some space again to to cache other things. All right. Um, questions on that? Otherwise, uh, there's another topic. This was a pretty big topic. We already talked about it in the DevOps meeting. Um, so I think Marco and Sebastian mainly worked on that, um, which is the Fabric upgrade. So upgrading to Fabric uh, 3. Um, there are a lot of changes. I won't go into any detail here, but like the main for using it, the main differences are now that the, the syntax for the command line changed somewhat. So it's dashes instead of underscores. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same. Um, yeah, the, I think there's more information on the DevOps meeting page if you're interested in any real details, or you can watch the recording for that or look at the PR description. Uh, there's a lot, a lot of changes, um, but testing is looking still pretty good. Um, it's been merged for a while and no, no big, um, yeah, nothing big was broken. Seems to work well. Okay. Um, so that would be it for the DevOps updates then. Um, I don't think there's any test stabilization or release updates as far as I'm aware. Um, for Bazel, there's a number of updates. Um, we're also working on refactoring um, a couple of Docker builds that um, don't really, I mean, that, that use um, Python environments that are still uh, connected to make. Um, and these will be removed then, and we'll use the Python services that are built with Bazel. Um, but this is still going on. Um, something that has already been done is that in the relevant make files for the access gateway, um, the targets will print a warning like this, that uh, there will be a, a switch over and that these targets will be deprecated. Um, and uh, yeah, it points to the proposal and also points to the basal documentation so you can see um, how else you could uh, do whatever you're trying to do here. Um, and also that you shouldn't add any new targets to these make files, just as a warning. Um, then the docs, the docs that are linked here have been extended in the remote caching section. So um, this is just to be in line with what was presented at the Basel show and tell. So information on um, alternatives for remote caching like Google Cloud Platform that were mentioned that we haven't yet used in Magma, but that could make sense in the future for maintainers. All of this kind of information was added just for completeness. Um, and yeah, any questions on these topics then? Otherwise I would hand over to Niels. All right, Niels, you want to take over? Yeah. Uh, let me grab the screen. So, hi everybody. I have a small, two small additional um, basal issues that we worked on. The first one is uh, regarding the using the disk cache of, uh, in in GitHub for the Python environment used in the integration test. So the thing is. Um, we, as you know, we are re removing all make targets and replacing them with basal targets. And one leftover was for the integration test there we need a Python environment. This environment uh, basically includes the generated Protoss files and the generated Swagger files. This was formally done uh, via make. Now it's done with Bazel, and the problem was that this took a long time with Bazel. And in order to solve this, again, uh, Bazel is very good with caching and relies on caching. And for this case, we decided to utilize the GitHub caches and store the, uh, yeah, the Bazel caches there for the pre-built artifacts. 
this is exactly the cache that Lars was uh, previously talking about, where we also store, for example, the uh, VMs for, for other builds in order to speed up. And this time we also store the uh, basal pre-built artifacts. Uh, this makes the build much faster. Um, just two runs uh, for comparison uh, from this pull request. So uh, before the build um, took roughly one hour uh, for for the in, for, sorry for creating the VM uh, where the tests are executed. So magma test it took one hour, and after using the GitHub caches, it went down to fifty minutes. So it roughly improves the runtime by forty-five minutes. Um, this is the first uh, runtime improvement. The second one is actually also a runtime in improvement. Um, it's for the FEG integration tests. So for the FEG integration tests, um, before this change, um, the Magma VM was created and Magma was built from scratch with Make. Additionally, um, the FEG and the orchestrator images were built and then uh, later then installed on Magma as well and the tests uh, are executed. The point here is that in the main focus for testing, of course, is the FEG Docker image. So um, we decided to change the current setup. Why build Magma from scratch if the FEG Docker image is tested? So we decided to try to install Magma with a pre-built Debian image. And it works fine. It was a bit of work to figure out uh, how to configure everything. So it works, works for the FEG. And here the runtime improvement is quite nice. Um, so uh, you see here that I'm tricking a little bit. I'm having here the uh, displayed the last ones of the federated integration tests but I have here a filter on successful runs. These tests are still flaky, but it's easier to see uh, a comparison for successful runs. So, and what we see here is that doo -doo 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 -doo, before it was merged, it was here. So uh, this one is still a run before the change and it takes, uh, yeah, two hours, 45 minutes, 2.23, 2 2.9. And after this change, the runtime went down to one hour 40 again and so on. So uh, up to one hour runtime is saved by using the Magma environment where Magma is installed as a Debian package. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say to these two last basal issues. Are there any questions? Then, thank you for listening. Um, the question is, is there anything else for the engineering meeting? Security updates, test stabilization, release, AGW orchestrator 5G updates, but uh, there we already learned that the people uh, working on that might be uh, busy with the upcoming event preparations. Um, for myself in security, I'm looking at uh, this cryptography bump and uh, uh, if Fritz is here, actually I didn't look, uh, I think that looks good. Uh, we may see a compile error in cryptography because it's a breaking change, keep your eye out, but I think we'll be okay. Uh, that's it. Thanks. Thank you. Is there anything else for the engineering meeting today? I, I have a question. On the features group on the TSC, there was a discussion about the what is the latest stable build. There was a discussion about 1.8 versus somebody that says we need to go back to 1.6. Um, is there any update on that from here, or is that should I be looking for that elsewhere? I was not involved in this meeting, so no answer from my side. Let me do this. Let me get the full context from Jordan, and then I will send a Slack message on this. But but I mean, um, uh, do, do you have more information? What is meant by the last stable build? 
there was some discussion about which, whether the 1.8 bill is actually, so let me just hold back. There's a discussion about when we do the final handoff, what should be the target release number that we should all focus towards being the stable, latest stable build that is on the handoff so people can track features against it or deltas against it. So that was a discussion, and the, and, the, and the discussion was, I believe, I'll have to go back on the notes, that there's some concerns about 1.8, whether it's even buildable or not, and so on. I just thought I'll just bring it up. Um, I'm probably, this is not helpful by just giving for, you know, fractions of discussion. So let me get the background from the full context, and I'll put it out on, on the message. OK, sounds good. Let's do it like that. Thank you. And um, I see that Yogesh has joined. Uh, Yogesh, is there any update on 5G or AGW? Uh, hi, Sam. Yeah. 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 Uh, sorry. yeah, I joined late. I got into some other work. Uh, uh, not as such, Som. I think there are some dashboard entries we are trying to update. Uh, so that uh, commit is not there. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, some Grafana will display some 5G related statistics. So that work is in progress. There are some clarifications we are giving on the Slack for some of the issues uh, trying to recreate, uh, but not as such. Uh, it's like uh, the day-to-day -day CICD and the queries which is being answered. Yeah. Thank you, I appreciate it. And you can just put it on the wiki directly. Yes, yes, I'll, I'll, I'll do that, I'll do that. Thank you so much. Um, that's it from my side, Niels. Yeah, thank you. Then anything else for the engineering meeting from anyone else? Then it was a, a fast meeting today, which is always a good meeting. So use the time. Uh, thank you very much. Have, have a nice day. Have a nice evening. See you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everyone.